Hello, welcome to my little Italian kitchen. Today we're going to wear a vintage apron, Scandinavian style, while we're making sourdough coffee cake. As you know, I couldn't find yeast for the longest time, and because of that, I did a sourdough starter. Well, there is or can be a lot of waste with these sourdough starters because every time you feed them, there is a little bit that you need to pour off. So I've been looking at all the different recipes. You saw one of them earlier. I made the sourdough popovers, which turned out great, and the flavor was incredible. And that was with sourdough starter um, kind of waste or, or throw away or pour off, whatever you want to call it. So uh, today we'll be doing, um, now, been storing starter. This is kind of the quote unquote waste amount. Um, and I've been storing it in the refrigerator. There's no need to get it out and feed it and do all of the extra steps that you need to do if you're actually going to use it for leaven for baking a big loaf of bread. This is just easy peasy, just an add-in to your recipe. As you can see, you get started by getting all of your ingredients out. <laughs> Oddly enough, I found yeast the other day and I wanted to show you what that looks like. Remember I had the particular kind of lievito that really ended up being just for uh, like muffins or this cake that's pictured here, they actually have the recipe for it on the back. I think I'm gonna try it. I think I've got a pan that will work. Here's the kind of yeast I was looking for and you can tell it's the right kind. So I was really pleased that I found this. Doesn't negate the enjoyment I've been getting out of my, my starter. Because I couldn't find regular vanilla, I'll be using one of these little packets. Um, notice it's se busta. Se means six and busta means packet. We'll use those today. My very favorite eggs in the world. Inside they have those beautiful orange yolks and vanilla burro, which is butter. And Greek yogurt, which really is Greek yogurt and really is close by, which is exciting and fun. Um, I already showed you the starter, our regular American craft baking powder. Um, I still have my, I don't know if you can see this, it's my ground cinnamon from Germany, Zimt, and Gemahlen means ground. So we'll use our German cinnamon and we'll get started. I'm gonna go ahead and measure and put the very first part, which is the crumble topping. I'll put all of those things into the bowl, starting with the melted butter. This is the easiest part. Just put the melted butter in, put the half cup of brown sugar in and half cup of flour and mix it together. I'll come right back as soon as I put the brown sugar and the flour, oh, and the chopped almond, uh, walnuts, excuse me, not almonds. Uh, I like a pretty coarse chop on my walnuts. And for this recipe, you don't even have to use them. Uh, I think it originally calls for pecans. You could go without nuts if you wanted. Okay, so in here I have the melted brown sugar, the zimt or cinnamon, which is two teaspoons, and I have a half cup of brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar or dark brown sugar. It doesn't make much of a difference to be quite honest with you. I know that some recipes um, call for light brown sugar and I, I say why. Why light brown? If you're going to go for it, go ahead and go with dark brown sugar. Um, get that extra molasses flavor in there because that's really the only difference is the amount of molasses used in with your granulated white sugar. So now that this is coming together, it's time to go ahead and put in the flour and the walnuts if they're being used. You never miss an opportunity to go nuts. So that's that. 
So we'll put that together. This is the, I love coffee cake. I love the idea of coffee cake. I always loved the Folgers coffee commercials and I loved uh, Mrs. Olson. She had that braid going around her head and she was always serving Folgers coffee to some neighbor at the table with some little Swedish coffee braid or something like that. I really wish life looked like that. It doesn't uh, necessarily look like that, but we can certainly get the flavors of that. So, that. so there we are. This is the first part. This is the streusel or the crumble layer. We're going to come back. We're going to do the second part, which is a cinnamon sugar filling. And then we'll do the batter, which is a simple stir in a bowl batter and put it all together and get it in the oven. What's interesting about this recipe is the cinnamon sugar filling is almost identical to the streusel as far as light brown sugar, equal, equal amounts of light brown sugar and all purpose flour and two teaspoons of cinnamon. It just isn't using the melted butter or the walnuts. So it's, it's very similar. You could actually double that streusel batch, make it all at once and call it a day. Just, just quite frankly. So let's go ahead and get our third cup of, they call for light brown. Remember I said I use dark brown whenever I can. And I can't always, sometimes you can't get, um, for instance, you can't buy dark brown sugar or light brown sugar in the Italian grocery stores. Sure. Otherwise, I would have to make it myself, which is not not unheard of. I've done it before. I had to do it back in the States once. I was desperate. I was right in the middle of a recipe and I needed more brown sugar. So I used my white granulated sugar, mixed it up right on the spot with some molasses, and there. Was done. I mean, because that really is all it is. Uh, this is just a convenience product, to be honest with you. That's the other thing you can't buy. Um, you can't buy molasses at the Italian grocery store. They don't have it. All right, so let's get our third cup of flour. And that third cup measure is just got some brown sugar on it, so I'll, I'll get a fresh third cup out. So that, and then our two teaspoons of Zimt. Trying to think of what they call cinnamon in Italian. Um, I can't remember. Huh, I'll have to look that up for you, let you know. So one teaspoon, I like a lot of cinnamon, so I kind of don't mind if I get a little extra here. All right, so we have that. It's just as simple as the last piece. Just make sure you stir it all up, get it all together, and then you're ready to get the last bowl out and make the batter. So, so, so glad you joined me today in my kitchen. This is the cinnamon sugar. This will be that layer that breaks up the batter. And we'll come back in just a moment, work on the batter. All right, so we have the streusel. We have the cinnamon filling, which is very much like the streusel. And now we're gonna make the batter. The instructions don't call for using that automatic kitchen or a hand mixer. It just says to cream the butter and the sugar together with a spatula. I have my doubts because my butter isn't completely room temperature yet, so we'll see how that goes. I am gonna get it started so that you don't see me struggling uh, like a mad woman over this butter and sugar. I'll be right back. Okay, I've decided to cut the butter up into smaller pieces. Hopefully that will Help my endeavor. I decided instead of like a rubber spatula, I'd get a spoon out. I'm getting serious with the tools here. So we'll cream it with this wooden spoon. Let's get our half cup of granulated sugar in there. And 
and we also need a half cup of brown sugar. And, you know, when it's right in front of you, sometimes you lose track of it. Oh, here we go. I hate to make a big deal out of it. I like to just stick my uh, cup in there and get it packed in and kind of a no must, no fuss. Just get it done a little faster. Of course, we always seal the brown sugar because it always seems to get so incredibly hard. I have many times ended up with an apple trick where you put a couple apple slices in it and the moisture from the apple slices moisturizes up the sugar and you can um, within a few hours use it again. So that trick really works. Just prefer not to have to use it in the first place. All right, so here we are. We've got sugars, we've got butter, and we have the spoon. Let's see if this is gonna work because it's supposed to cream. I'm gonna struggle with this just a little bit so you can see. Oh, I tell you, but you know, there's something cathartic about getting in the kitchen, looking at beautiful, ingredients, being grateful that you have beautiful ingredients to work with, and then struggling to make those ingredients come underneath your control so that you can put together something tasty and comforting and wonderful at the end. Right now I have the oven preheating to 175 centigrade, which is 350. Remember I use an oven thermometer because I have found that all ovens, whether it's stateside or if you're using something with centigrade, they uh, do, you're just between the dial and the actual temperature in the oven, that can vary. Uh, it can vary you know, just by a couple of degrees, or it can actually vary clear up to five, 10 degrees, which does, you know, it's science. This is chemistry that you're working with. And by the way, I really hope that you are taking the opportunity with your starter to create a science project with your kids. You know, uh, starters require a uniform temperature to survive. So when you're doing that first seven days of making your starter and maturing it, it needs to be in a 70 degree, 70, 72 um, degrees. Uh, so the recommendation of the recipe that I used this last time was to put it on top of the refrigerator underneath a uh, tightly woven dishcloth. Um, and that is, that's just basic, you know, science and chemistry and biology, right? I was talking with someone recently about starting their own starter, and uh, they were surprised that it's just flour and water. It's like, it is just flour and water, and the magic is provided partially by the flour and partially by the air. So there's a lot of yeast in the air. That would be a great topic for kids to research online and look at all of the different little organisms that make up the air that we breathe and which in turn provide the magic for some of these uh, cooking things that we do. Because, you know, let's face it, somebody had to discover what was happening. They may not have been able to see it through a microscope, but they knew Gosh, flour and water, let it sit, keep feeding it, keep working it, and eventually it begins to bubble. Some sort of action is happening there. So with your kids, what I would do is have them do a biology, find out, you know, mold, spores, yeasts, uh, bacteria, viruses, um, it, all of the different things that are running around in the air. Um, try not to scare them with, you know, COVID, uh, if possible. Maybe they're old enough and they're curious enough to really 
uh, work on looking at what what COVID is, um, what what is making that virus function. I believe I just read that it's not alive. COVID is not alive. So how does that work in the body? How does it work in the system? How does it multiply? Uh, it would be a fascinating study for kids who um, are developmentally at that age where that would work. But yeast, oh gosh, when did we start studying yeast and how they bud and how, you know, what sort of an environment they thrive in? Um, I think that was pretty young. I think that was grade school. So um, they could be working on their own starter they could be doing their own experiments with starter. You could have a control batch that is maybe in too cool of an area and um, another little batch and just make them small. They don't, you don't have to be using tons of flour or anything like that. This, the operational pieces of it function with very small amounts and they could uh, be going through the process then. They could see the acid. If you've got any litmus paper hanging around, I know we all have litmus paper, right? <laughs> um, they can use litmus paper to see how acidic or how alkaline their starter is becoming and how that's measuring from day to day. Uh, they will notice that there's a little separation of fluids and that fluid on the top, it has um, you know, and, and can develop quite uh, an acidic odor over the days, or uh, if you're really following instructions, you're actually pouring that off before you feed your starter again. And look at this. I managed to cream that butter and sugar just with a wooden spoon. All right, so we've got our creamed butter and sugar. Next step will be to put the eggs in. Now, I want a small little bowl, or I don't have to do that, I can use this. Uh, I like to crack my eggs into a separate container for a couple of reasons. One, I like to make sure the eggs are still fresh, um, but I also like to make sure I don't have any eggshells in there. Many is the day I have cracked an egg and managed to get a ton of eggshells in to the bowl. Did you see how orange this is? This just blows my mind. I mean, the color, it's like Easter egg orange. And that's because they feed their chickens their good, wholesome ingredients, which in turn, of course, you are what you eat. Did you know that when you go to the Italian grocery store, it's the same way in Germany too. It's probably the same way in many countries. Um, I just had never seen it before. Uh, you go look for the eggs. I was looking in the dairy aisle and then looking in the other refrigerated aisles. I couldn't find any eggs, couldn't find any eggs. Sitting on a shelf over near the deli section, not refrigerated, are all the eggs. They do not refrigerate their eggs here. They don't have to. They don't have the problem with salmonella. Okay, I've double checked and I am right on course. We're going to add the eggs, which we already have done. Then we're going to add the vanilla. Now this recipe calls for sour cream. I don't have sour cream. I am sorry to say, ooh, this is so pretty. I don't know if you can see this, but this vanilla, I don't think it's what I thought it was. Um, it smells like vanilla, but it's not like the ground vanilla that I get in Germany, which is like the interior of the vanilla bean. You know, it's that dark brown, finely ground, oh, ground vanilla from Germany. It is the best. This is something else. This looks to me like something they would use on the top. I don't know if you can see just how shiny and pretty that is. Well, it smells good. I've used it in other recipes. It tastes good. It'll do the trick, um, but this is not like the ground vanilla that I'm used to working with from Germany or the liquid vanilla that we're used to working with in the US. This is another prettier angelic version, um, hence the picture of the angel on the product. All right, 
eggs, vanilla. I'm gonna need a half cup. So this is how I store my starter in the refrigerator, just with a VEC container, uh, it keeps it easy. So I need a half cup. So I'll go ahead and it's, I'm gonna count it as a liquid measure as opposed to a dry measure. Uh, and of course I've decided to take the long way around. And I've got a little spatula right here. I think this is really our perfect amount, but I want to make sure I'm measuring. I have um, an additional VEC container of starter in the refrigerator so that I can work on my sourdough bread process. But bread is, oh, it's an art. It really is an art form and you have to have to keep working at your technique. You have to understand how your local area starter is performing and behaving. Uh, you have to smell your starter. It should smell light and sweet and then get a little acidic and sour. It shouldn't be too acidic and sour. As long as it's still alive and you know it's alive by the bubbles in there. If there are no bubbles, it's not alive. It's dead. And then for that feeding cycle where you've got to discard a little bit of it, use that discard. Use it for popovers. Use it for um, a coffee cake like the one I'm doing here. And I'll, I'll make sure I've got the link up for you. Um, we also need a teaspoon of salt. Oh my gosh. I bought the fine salt this last time instead of the coarse salt. And oh, it, it I can't even express how excited I am about just the way it's behaving. Need to put in some baking powder. This would be the additional leavening. If I wanted, I could use that other product, that other lievito. Everything, we need the buttermilk. Didn't have buttermilk, can't buy buttermilk here. Um, so I did the buttermilk substitute, which is the milk with a little bit of white vinegar in it. Let it sit for five minutes. Here we are. Um, I'm going to get this to a consistent sort, because you can see it's all just kind of gloppy. I'm going to get it fairly consistent. Then I'll add in the flour, and then it's ready to layer in the pan. Since this segment has been pretty long, I'm going to stop the camera, and I will be right back. Now we're at the point where you've got to get serious about how you're measuring your flour. So make sure that you're um, using the knife method. You want to make sure that it's all leveled off, that you've stuck your knife in and gotten rid of any air pockets that might have happened in there. So here's the second one. Um, again, sticking my knife in, getting rid of any air pockets, and skimming off the top. So let's get this all incorporated and make a beautiful batter and then we're going to layer it in a prepared 8x8 pan. I'm using a Pyrexa glass pan, 8x8, that has been sprayed with uh, cooking spray. This is a little too rustic for my taste. So I'm going to get a whisk so that I can get rid of some of the lumps that are in there. One thing I do see that's super fun, let's see if the camera can catch this. That sourdough starter, let's see if I can get it without a... Do you see all the little bubbles in there? That is because that starter is active and alive. Uh, and that will help uh, with the whole texture of this coffee cake. Kind of exciting. All right, let me get the wire whisk. Let's get the work done that we need to do. Let's get this put together. Get that layered with that cinnamon layer. There we go, yeah. Wire whip, that is the way to go. It works, all right. Let's get the pan, let's get our layering done. Let's get this in the oven. This just seems like it's taking forever, doesn't it? Okay, so here's our pan. We want half of this. There we go. That might be a little more, a little less. Um, you want to just approximate it. It's not a big deal. Let me get the cinnamon sugar layer. And we want to 
shake it over the top in a fairly even layer. So we will do our best. If we have to, we'll kind of assist with a spatula and make sure it goes clear to the edges because you don't want to get a bite that doesn't have the sugar cinnamon in it. No, nobody wants that. All right, so we've got that. Now it's time for the rest of the batter. Let me just double check on one item. Yep, carefully pour remaining batter over the cinnamon sugar to cover. So we'll do that in these batter ribbons. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Love batter. Love batter ribbons. That's easy. Now, I am serious. I would love to join you in your kitchen and see what you're doing and what you're coming up with. Now, unfortunately, the camera is on the side of the world that makes it so that you can't really see this coming out of the bowl. This is that incredible streusel layer. And I, I do think next time I'm gonna put streusel in the middle. I am not gonna waste my time with this namby-pamby little cinnamon sugar layer. I'm gonna put this, I like crunchy, full strength flavor. Yeah, that's what I like. So next time we're gonna have this, it's just gonna be a streusel cake. It's gonna be all streusel. Yum! All right, you can see it. Oh, it's heavy. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, this is good gravy. Be right back. Let's take a look at it in the oven. It's just gotten started. What's fun is you can see if I can get the reflection right. That layer, that little cinnamon layer, and that's because I got it all the way to the edge. So, and we're looking at the oven thermometer. I just want to double check, and yep, 350, exactly where it should be. All right, so I just got it out of the oven. It smells like it's done, it smells perfect. Let's do the test. Well, I would say that is still a little bit wet on the inside and that is not acceptable. So it's got to go back in. It's starting to get dark brown on the top. I think I am going to cover it with some foil just to protect that yummy streusel that we made. Okay, so finally done. So very excited about it.